Hello and welcome to the session on personality theories of cattle and icing. Cattle's straight theory of personality. Before going to his theory in detail, let us have a brief idea of his biography. Raymond Cattle was born in 1905 and died in 1998. He was educated in Britain and he obtained his doctorate from University of London and after which he worked as director child guidance clinic for five years. He came to the US to work with E. L. Thorndike and developed officer selection methods. He established an institute for personality and ability testing. He taught at University of Illinois for 30 years and more and went to Hawaii in 1978 and until death he was teaching in the University of Hawaii. Cattle thought that clinicians observations were not a scientific basis for understanding or classifying personality. He used inductive method of scientific inquiry to develop his theory of personality. That is, he gathered large amount of data and used factor analysis on the data looking for clusters. For cattle, personality was that which permit a prediction of what a person will do in a given situation. The underlying basic factors of a person's personality were termed by him as source traits. He used factor analysis and found common clusters of surface traits. These clusters were termed by cattle as source traits. He gathered data about the individual from the life records, took self reports and used the questionnaire data and used tests and obtained test results which all put together with source traits gave the personality of an individual. Kettle has identified 35 primary traits of which 23 were characterized of normal individuals and 12 were characterized of abnormal individuals. He developed a scale called 16 PF which was designed to assess 16 different source traits associated with normal behavior. Cattle said that humans are innately driven by ERGS, e -R -G -S, which means goals were created because of hunger, curiosity, anger, fear or other basic motivations which are found in both humans and primates. Cattle believed that intelligence was primarily an inherited trait. Cattle was of the view that personality has to be considered in terms of not only traits but also various other variables including attitudes. He defined attitude as a desire to act in a specific way in response to a specific situation. Attitudes are interconnected within the dynamic lattice. Then what is dynamic lattice? It is Cattle's attempt to display graphically his theoretical analysis of the relationship between the mind's instinctive driving forces and their overlying semantic and attitudinal superstructure. The specific attitudinal connections within the dynamic lattice are controlled by subsidiation chains that is some attitudes are subordinate to other attitudes. The subsidiation chain helps determine when specific attitude will produce a specific behavior. Environmental factors were considered essential by cattle to determine personality and behavior. Cattle's theory of personality attempts to explain the interaction between the genetic and personality systems and the socio-cultural milieu within which the organism is functioning. It derives deep into the complicated transactions between the personality system and the more inclusive socio-cultural matrix of the functioning organism. According to him, these traits are genetically and environmentally determined and the ways in which genetic and environmental factors interact decide the behavior of the individual. Cattle opines that an appropriate theory of personality must take into account 
the multiple traits that comprise the personality. The theory should be able to indicate the ways in which genetic and environmental factors interact to influence behavior. He believes that personality functioning and growth must be based on systematic research methods and precise measurements. Multivariate statistics and factor analysis are his preferred methods of personality study. Now, let us learn the formula for personality. According to him, with the help of mathematical analysis of personality, the prediction of behavior can be made by a specification equation. The formula used by cattle to predict behavior with any degree of accuracy is given here. R is equal to F S P, where R refers to the nature of a person's specific response, F refers to the unspecified function, S refers to the stimulus situation at a given moment in time and P refers to the personality structure. To be more specific, this formula signifies that the nature of a person's specific response means what the person does or thinks or verbalizes is some unspecified function of the stimulus situation at a given moment in time and also of the individual's personality structure. The specification equation shows that the person's specific responses to any given situation is a function of all the combined traits relevant to that situation. Here each trait is interacting with situational factors that may affect it. Cattle also accepts that it is difficult to predict a person's behavior in a given situation. In order to increase predictive accuracy, the personality theorist must consider not only what traits a person possesses, but also the many non-trait variables such as a person's moods and particular social roles called for in the situation and related aspects. It is also necessary to weigh each trait according to its relevance to the situation in question. For example, if the person were in emotionally arousing situation, the trait of anxiety would be assigned a high weight in predicting the person's response. Thus, the equation is oversimplification of cattle's trait theory. Yet, this general formula conveys cattle's strong belief that human behavior is determined and can be predicted. Next, we can discuss the different categories of traits. According to cattle, behavior is determined by the interaction of traits and situational variables, but his major organizing concept of personality resides in his description of the various kinds of traits he has identified. Traits are relatively permanent and pervasive tendencies to respond with consistency from one situation to another and from one time to another. Traits are hypothetical mental structures inferred from behavior which predisposes the person to behave uniformly across various circumstances and across time. Traits reflect the person's stable and predictable characteristics and are by far the most important of cattle's concepts. Cattle relies heavily on factor analysis to investigate the structural elements of personality. He concludes that traits can be classified in several ways such as surface traits, source traits, constitutional traits, environmental mold traits, ability traits, temperamental traits, dynamic traits, common traits and unique traits. Let us take up these traits and see how they function. First of all, we will discuss surface traits versus source traits. A surface trait is a set of behavioral characteristics that all seem to hang together. For instance, the observed characteristics of inability to concentrate, indecisiveness, restlessness, etc., may cluster together to form the surface traits of neuroticism. Here, the trait of neuroticism is observed by a cluster of overt elements that seem to go together. It does not derive from any single factor or element. Surface traits do not have a unitary basis and are not consistent over time and hence 
they are not given much value for behavioral accountability. On the other hand, source traits are the basic underlying structures which constitute the building blocks of personality. They represent the unitary dimension or factors that ultimately determine the consistencies in each person's observed behavior. Source traits exist at a deeper level of the personality and are the causes of behavior in diverse domains over an extended period of time. After extensive factor analytic research, Cattle concluded that there are approximately 16 source traits that constitute the underlying structure of personality. They are warmth, reasoning, emotional stability, dominance, liveliness, rule consciousness, social boldness, sensitivity, vigilance, abstractness, privateness, apprehension, openness to change, self-reliance, perfectionism and tension. 16 PF, it is otherwise called 16 personality factor questionnaire designed by Cattle consists of the, these personality trait factors. It is a self-report scale that has proved to be quite useful and popular in both applied and research settings. Cattle considered personality traits to have multi-level hierarchical structure. In his research, Cattle tried to find out the primary traits of personality and found that these primary traits came together in meaningful groupings and formed broader global traits. These global traits were termed by him as secondary traits. For example, the first global trait he found was the introversion extroversion. It resulted from the natural affinity of five primary traits that defined different reasons for an individual to move toward people and away from people. Cattle stated that there was a natural tendency for these traits to go together in the real world and these represented important behavioral domain. The primary traits that constituted the extroversion introversion dimension were warmth, liveliness, social boldness, forthrightness and affiliate. Source traits can be divided into two subtypes depending on their origin. They are constitutional versus environmental mold traits. Constitutional traits derive from the biological and physiological conditions of the person. For instance, recovery from cocaine addiction may cause a person to be momentarily irritable, depressed and anxious. Cattle would suggest that these behaviors result from changes in the person's physiology and thus reflect constitutional source traits. Whereas environmental source traits are determined by influences in the social and physical environment, these traits reflect learned characteristics and styles of behaving and form a person This is imprinted on the personality by the individual's environment. Thus, a person who is raised in rural setting behaves differently from a person who grows up in the urban area. Next division is ability, temperament and dynamic traits. Source traits can further be classified in terms of the modality through which they are expressed. Ability traits determine the person's skill and effectiveness in pursuing a desired goal. For example, intelligence and musical aptitude. Temperament traits relate to other emotional and stylistic qualities of behavior. For example, people may either work quickly or slowly on a task. Cattle considers temperament traits to constitutional source traits that determine a person's emotionality. Dynamic traits reflect the motivational elements of human behavior. These are traits that activate and direct the person toward particular goals. Thus, a person may be characterized as ambitious, power oriented or interested in acquiring material possessions. Next category is common versus unique traits. A common trait is one that is shared in varying degrees by all members of the same culture. For example, self-esteem, intelligence and introversion. 
unique traits are those that are shared by few or no other people. Unique traits are especially observed in the areas of interest and attitudes. Kettle gives much significance on use of factor analysis to identify the major traits of personality. Kettle draws his data from three basic sources. First is life record data, it is otherwise called L data, self rating questionnaire data that is Q data and objective test data that is OT data. L data involves a measurement of behavior in actual everyday situations such as school performance or interactions with peers. Q data refers to the person's self ratings about his or her behavior, feelings or thoughts. Such information reflects the person's introspections and self observations. Such data is prone to faking. Finally, OT data are derived from the creation of special situations in which the person's performance on certain tasks may be objectively scored. For example, responding to a Rocha test. Such data is resistant to faking. Our next focus is Ising's trait type theory. Hans Jungen Ising, or shortly H. J. Ising, his lifespan was between 1916 to 1997. He was a British psychologist. He was known for his theory of human personality. He suggested that personality is biologically determined and is arranged in a hierarchy consisting of types, traits, habitual responses and specific responses. Ising did not believe in Freudian psychoanalysis as he considered it rather unscientific. Next is hierarchical taxonomy enunciated by Hans J. Ising. According to Ising, personality can be studied from either temperamental or cognitive aspects or both. He focused on the temperament aspect of personality in his PEN pen model. Individual difference in personality or temperament is analyzed in terms of traits which can be defined as theoretical constructs based on co-variations of a number of behavioral acts. However, Ising further supposes that traits themselves intercorrelate and make up higher order factors or super factors which Eisen calls types. Let us move to the three dimensions of personality put forward by Eisen. Eisen strongly advocates that there are only three major dimensions or super factors in the description of personality. They are extroversion introversion emotional stability versus instability or neuroticism, psychoticism versus impulse control. In the PEN model, these dimensions or super factors are based on constitutional, genetic or inborn factors which are to be discovered in the physiological, neurological and biochemical structure of individual. Each person does not necessarily have either 100 percent or 0 percent of extraversion, neuroticism or psychoticism. An individual may show some degree of these super factors on the continuum. A person may have high extraversion, moderate neuroticism and low psychoticism. I think suggests after studying psychosis that psychotic symptoms and illness do not form completely separate diagnostic entities. Psychosis is not a separate diagnostic entity which is categorically separated from normality and this continuum is collinear with the concept of psychoticism embodied in the P scale of the Ising's personality questionnaire that is EPQ. On this continuum, a person with high extraversion is sociable, popular, optimistic and rather unreliable whereas a person with a low extraversion is quiet, introspective, reserved and reliable. A person with high neuroticism is anxious, worried, moody and unstable whereas a person with low neuroticism is calm, even tempered, carefree and emotionally stable. A person with high psychoticism is troublesome, uncooperative, hostile and socially withdrawn, whereas a person with low psychoticism is altruistic, socialized, empathetic and conventional. 
Next, we will discuss the causal aspects. Based on the three dimensional description of personality, the PEN model further attempts to provide causal explanation of personality. The PEN model looks for psychophysiological, hormonal and other biological mechanisms responsible for the personality dimensions, so that the theory can be tested by scientific experiments. Eisen clearly contend that no theory would be considered valid that did not make testable and verified predictions. Consequently, Eisen proposes the arousal theory by modifying his inhibition theory to explain the causal roots of the three dimensions of personality. At first, we will discuss the neurophysiological basis of traits and types. The neurophysiological indices of neurotic patients with the different types of individuals characters and their dynamics are important factors of personality. Analysis of the dynamics of the neurophysiological characteristics made during group psychotherapy supported the clinical data on varying curability of neurotic patients with the different types of character accentuations. For instance, in patients with the hysteriotype character, accentuation appeared more resistant to psychotherapy. Eisen also made an attempt to specify a neurophysiological basis for each of his three personality super traits or types. According to him, the super trait introversion extraversion is closely related to levels of cortical arousal as indicated by electroencephalographic recordings. He used the term arousal to denote a continuum of excitation ranging from a lower extreme, for example, sleep to an upper extreme, for example, a state of panic. He was of the view that introverts are over aroused and thus are highly sensitive to incoming stimulation. For this reason, they avoided situations that are apt to overwhelm them. Next is neuroticism and visceral brain activation. I think also explain neuroticism in terms of activation thresholds in the sympathetic nervous system or visceral brain. The visceral brain is also referred to as the limbic system, which regulates such emotional states as sex, fear and aggression. It is responsible for the fight or flight response in the phase of danger. Heart rate, blood pressure, skin conductance, sweating, breathing rate and muscular tension in the forehead can measure activation levels of the visceral brain. Neurotic individuals have greater activation levels and lower thresholds within the visceral brain. They are easily upset in the face of very minor stresses. However, emotionally stable people are calm under such stresses because they have lesser activation levels and higher thresholds. Next, we will discuss psychoticism and gonadal hormones. Ising also provides a biological explanation of psychoticism in terms of gonadal hormones such as testosterone and enzymes such as monoamine oxidase, it is otherwise called MAO. All things considered, the PEN model has contributed to the study of personality in the following distinctive ways. First of all, it combines both the descriptive and causal aspects of personality in one theory. This characteristic clearly distinguishes the PEN model from most other trait theories such as the five factor model. Next, it provides causal explanation in addition to the description of personality. The PEN model is supported by more credible evidence than purely descriptive models. The PEN model is comprehensive in description by proposing a hierarchy of four levels and by making a clear distinction among those levels. The PEN model becomes most compelling because of its experimental approach. This makes the model more testable. Consequently, the PEN model is likely to generate more specific predictions about personality. Let us summarize what we have discussed so far. We have been discussing two relevant personality theories put forward by Raymond Cattell and Hans Eysenck. Cattell's theory seeks to explain the complicated transactions between 
personality system and the socio-cultural matrix of the functioning organism. According to him, a comprehensive theory of personality must take into account the multiple traits that comprise the personality. The chapter gives Cattle's theory of personality, its definitions and the dynamics underlying the theory. Isaac's approach is more anchored in theory. He suggests that not more than three super traits are needed to account for most of human behavior. He places much importance on genetic factors in personality development. At the same time, he does not ignore the environmental influences on personality. Now, you can try to answer the questions. First question, what are the various types of traits? Discuss with suitable examples. What are a source trait and a surface trait? Another question. Describe in detail Cattle's trait theory of personality. Explain Ising's trait type theory of personality. Describe the neurophysiological basis of trait and types. And the last question Explain the neurophysiological basis of neuroticism. Hope that you may go through the reference books given here. Personality theories, basic assumptions, research and applications by L. A. Hegel and D. J. Segler, McGraw-Hill, London, in the year 1992. Another book, Personality Theories, a Comparative Analysis by S. R. Maddy, Darcy Press, Homewood in the year 1989. Still one more book, Personality, Theory and Research by L. A. Pervin, Willey, New York in the year 1989. Thank you for watching this program. We can meet again with another topic. Till then, take care.